Now we want to move on to <laughs> confirming the worst kept secret in politics. <laughs> the Boston Globe, the first to report, our Allison King did confirm Joe Kennedy III is running for Ed Markey's Massachusetts Senate seat. He's expected to formally announce on Saturday in East Boston. The idea obviously been floating for a while, giving Markey, by the way, some time to consolidate his support. Uh, now you want to see who else jumps in, what does Markey do, who might go after Kennedy's house seat. I mean, this is fascinating stuff and a lot of questions. Uh, uh, Rebecca, and again, like, I want to start with you because <laughs> I'm, I'm old. You got grays. I'm not even going to ask you. <laughs> so um, a lot of people think it's Kennedy Young versus Markey Old, but Markey is very progressive. Yes. So from your sort of lens, how do you view the race? I think it's fascinating. Markey's incredibly progressive. He's one of the most progressive senators um, in the Senate. He's the sponsor of the Green New Deal with AOC. Right. Um, he's led on net neutrality and a lot of tech, like tech and environment. He's always been on the forefront. So is he older? Yes, but he's been on the forefront of issues that young people are fighting for. Um, Kennedy, I think the thing that is interesting is yes, he is young, and people always want you know fresh young faces in government. I think. What's helping him is he's got the Kennedy name. I think some of the baggage is it feel, feels very institutional that he has the Kennedy name. Right. So if Snap, like Snap, your friends, where do you think they'll lean? So, not you, <laughs> unless you want to. But I'm saying like your cohort. You can make news right here. Uh, <laughs> is the Massachusetts so, Democrats coming? So in? Uh, uh, <laughs> we we do not endorse in contested okay. primaries, but I will say at the convention it was um, very clear. Markey had a lot of support at the state convention that was happening on Saturday. Uh, so it was interesting to see what's going to happen. And as you said, there's going to be incredible impacts down the line. You know, now that he's putting his hat in the ring, there's a whole domino oh, effect yeah. of who's going to run for his seat. There's already, pe there's already people in that race. And then who's going to run for the seats of people going into it's. Yeah. And there's so much money being synced into You that. have some color on Markey, you said off, off camera, right? Or something. I spoke to some people well connected with Markey and his operation. And yeah. they're saying this changes nothing right now. This change, they're going to continue their plan as he runs for re-election. Uh, as you've seen just in the last couple of days, Elizabeth Warren, you know, again, uh, sticking with Markey with her endorsement, state Senate president uh, and the state uh, House Speaker as well. So they're saying they've been prepared for this. This changes nothing. They also point out that in the Democratic primary, uh, a lot of older voters that maybe connect well with Markey, and that it's I know, a lot of older voters see the Kennedy name and they're like, yeah. oh, the days of that old. Too. Wait, that too. I mean, the, the story here too is how weak Markey is. I mean, just period. There were already two challengers in the Democratic mm -hmm. primary against Markey. Joe Kennedy. What about him third. makes him so? I'm not to interrupt you. What, what, what about him I makes him vulnerable? When you, when, you t when you see him in person and you look at his record, he's remarkable. But I can't tell you how. Many many times I spend when somebody goes, your senator's Warren and mm. he's low key. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which in politics nowadays is not the way to be, let's be honest. Right. So yeah. uh, do you think, I mean, we've talked about this so many times. I mean, you think Markey stays in and takes it all the way to the post? I, I don't see him getting out right now. At least that's not what his team is saying. I mean, he's got the establishment behind him, whether that really counts against somebody with incredible name ID and the Kennedy mystique. We'll, we'll find out one thing. I feel sorry for you guys, uh, or I feel sorry for Massachusetts Democrats to a degree, because this is going to be a house divided between now and a year from now. Like us in New Hampshire, your primary is extremely late. Yeah. This is really going to tear a lot of people apart. Does this now give, and you guys are the experts here, does this give the De Republicans a chance to maybe put a credible candidate up? Well, uh, the, the Capuano Presley race, uh, that was a heartbreaker for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. it, the, the party stayed together. So I think, I think that we're in a new world now where no incumbent in any party should be taking anything for granted and that these family fights are going to going to happen more often. Yeah, go ahead. I don't think they're family fights. I think it's healthy to have primaries. It keeps people, you know, making sure that their constituents are listening to them, that people care about what matters. Mm. Yeah. yeah, to specifically address your question, I, I think that uh, it'd be hard pressed to see a Republican winning that, that seat oh, in Massachusetts, so but it, it is.